Okay, on to the body now. Uh, as you can see, we got the body painted. We did switch brands of paint. I wasn't happy with the full cart bronze. I thought it was too orange. So I went with the Anita bronze, which is uh, much more on the brown side. And I like that uh, a ton better than the full cart bronze. Uh, no real issue spraying it on there. Uh, it was all easy peasy. Uh, we almost lost this body. I thought I was going to have to buy another one because I almost uh, ruined it. Uh, I took it outside to clear it and uh, it was a beautiful spring day. Uh, this has been cleared with the Minwax Polycrylic. We'll talk about this here in a minute. But I put about two or three coats on it and thought, well, you know, it's a beautiful day out here. I'm going to leave it out here let it dry. And uh, come back out in a minute or two and uh, bring it in the house. When my wife came home from work, we started ratchet jaw and I forgot all about the body being out there in the sun. So it was probably out there for about five minutes. <clears throat> so when I went to get it, uh, yeah, it was, I thought I was going to have to get another body. Uh, it was actually starting to melt. The, the sides were starting to splay out. Uh, this center uh, post was deformed. And um, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So I took it in the house, uh, used a hair dryer and carefully worked with the body. Um, got the center post uh, much more straighter than what it was. Still a little, got a little bit of a wave in it, but it's, uh, I can live with it. It's uh, pretty straight. Uh, got the sides tucked back in. Um, we got the hood to fit again because the hood being the body was kind of distorted. The hood no longer fit. So we got the hood to fit. I heated up inside the fenders to get it out a little bit uh, and finally got the hood to fit in there like it did. The only thing uh, I didn't do was I need actually to raise this cowl up a little bit but I can't because if I put too much heat on this cowl then this starts to deform this center post so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, I'll just have to live with it. Uh, but. Um, yeah, um, it, it's hell getting old. Uh, I should have remembered it was out there. I just forgot all about it. But uh, we were able to save it for the most part, so it'll be all good. Uh, on the polycrylic, um, you know, I used this on my base for the bat plane, and it came out really nice. So I wanted to try it on a car body. I don't think I've ever used this on a car body. Uh, this is meant for wood. It's meant for sealing in a stained wood to give it a nice uh, finish, hard finish. And it does give whatever you spray this stuff with a really crystal hard finish, you know. And uh, if you want to know more about this, Stokes, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, go over to Top Revision 1, Mike's channel. And about a year ago, he did a, a test video using polycrylic. He used a spray can and a quart can because you can get it either in a quart can or spray. And he did uh, tests with it uh, on different paints and different uh, surfaces and stuff. So you go over to his channel and Mike will answer probably most of your questions that you have just by watching his video. But there is a couple of things I want to mention real quick though. And one of them is if you're going to use this stuff, you want to make sure that the spray nozzle is always clean and clear. Because when you're spraying this stuff, this polyacrylic uh, poly will dry on the nozzle and it'll plug it and it'll also give you a funky spray pattern. So after each spraying, make sure you clear off this nozzle. Make sure it's good and clean and there's no uh, uh, polyacrylic dried on it. That'll screw up your spray uh, pattern. And uh, it'll gum up enough to where it won't even work. So uh, make sure that the nozzle is always clear. And then, uh, you know, it comes out heavy, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, you have to do it pretty quick. You don't want to spend too much time on one area because this stuff, as I said, is heavy. It comes out thick, and uh, you'll get a whole bunch on there real quick before you know it. Uh, also, too, it goes on milky, so when it starts, starts to turn to milk, that's when you want to stop, let it dry, and then it will clear right up when it dries. So... Don't freak out if you uh, see it turning into milk. Uh, that's the property of this uh, polycrylic. And then anything else you want to know, just go over to Mike's channel, Top Revision 1, and take a look at his video. 
uh, you'll see it on this channel. So, uh, before I put the body on this, I'll probably uh, hit it with some, um, um, what the hell is it called? Novus. <laughs> Couldn't think of the name of it. I'll probably hit it with some Novus Polish, Novus 2, and then Novus 1 to kind of uh, smooth it out a little bit. But, um, yeah, I'm happy with it. I like it. It looks great with that interior. I had the body on it real quick just to make sure uh, there was no issue since I distorted it and uh, there's no issues with it so uh, we'll, we'll be good as far as it to getting uh, getting the body on the frame we're still in good shape so okay let's talk about the rolling chassis we got completed um, don't want to spend too much time on this because we'll end up with an hour long video we've got everything on it we've got the engine in we got the wheels on we got the uh, pan on the uh, frame uh, drive shaft in, shocks on, everything painted underneath. All I do is go back and fill this hole. Uh, I forgot to fill it in. It's the hole for the stock exhaust. Uh, we're using side exhaust or side exit uh, exhaust, so um, I need to fill that hole in. Um, two issues I want to talk about real quick. One, again, is this rear axle. It's too narrow for the car. I don't know why they made this uh, axle housing so narrow. Uh, in order to get these wheels to be the same as the front as far as the track of the wheels you're going to have to use a quarter inch spacer uh, the hub is about three eighths in diameter luckily I have three eighths tubing so I cut a quarter inch off of the uh, tubing made me a spacer glued it on the hub then glued the wheel onto the spacer um, if you don't do that, you're going to end up with a silly looking car in my book because your front wheels will be way out here and then your rear wheels are going to be way inside uh, right by the uh, uh, springs here and it just looks uh, it looks stupid. <laughs> Simple as that in my book. Um, you know, the car's track should be somewhat equal between the front and rear and, um, you know, that's uh, the fact that I had to move them out a quarter of an inch tells you how narrow that rear axle housing is but uh, we've got all that straightened out and we're looking good there the tie rod I think this is the tie rod uh, you're going to have to thin it down because if you don't thin that tie rod down when you go to put the engine in and we'll let the engine sit all the way down you can't glue the motor mounts to the frame so you're going to have to thin these tie rods uh, down uh, I just took my exacto blade went in there and kind of whittled away at them until I got the engine to sit down where it should. Uh, the engine, uh, we, we black washed it and brought all that uh, wonderful detail. It's, it's a fantastic uh, straight six. And Moby's did a super job on the engine in my book. It looks great. Uh, not so much on the rear end, but <coughs> rear end, but the engine looks great. Um, so uh, that's the story on that. We're all ready to uh, boogie down and have some fun. We've sanded the side of the rails down to get us back down to a bare plastic. So when we glue it to the resin body, uh, well, I got most of the paint off. But we'll have a nice uh, gluing uh, surface to uh, uh, get the uh, sides of the body to stick to the frame. Um, we've got... Uh, the rear seat in, front seat in, got the crab handles on, got the carpeting painted. Uh, the carpeting is two colors, Army Painter Brown and um, Burnt Umber. I uh, kind of stippled the Burnt Umber over the uh, Army Painter Leather Brown to give the carpeting a, a kind of a speckled look. Uh, my mom's carpeting in her car was like that. It was a black and gray carpeting, kind of speckled nylon loop kind of thing. Is uh, very rugged carpeting looked pretty good too. So that's the carpeting. Uh, the seats uh, have been painted in chestnut, and then the inset, the inserts have been painted uh, light uh, moon, um, light moon, light mocha. And then uh, I wasn't happy with the light mocha, so uh, I left the light mocha on there and I went over it with a wash of raw sienna to get them looking a little closer to the one-to-one -one car I used to come up with these uh, interior colors 
thought they would look great with the bronze, so that's why I went with them. Here are the door panels done up in the same fashion and we used our Prismacolor marker for the chrome trim, door handles, uh, window cranks and a lot of other uh, fun stuff. Here's the other one. Uh, we've got uh, the dashboard done. Well, it's not done. It's done. Well, it's painted. I still have to put all the decals on it. we got most of the decals on it. Still got about three decals to put on the dashboard yet, but uh, that's looking pretty good. Uh, the steering column we have to paint. The steering wheel, uh, both the steering column and steering wheel come in chrome. Yeah, well, obviously I don't want that. So we're going to paint the steering column the chestnut. And then the steering wheel is going to be the chestnut too. But I'm also leave the uh, horn ring uh, chrome and uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, steering wheel chrome. Uh, that's how the uh, one to one is. So that's how we'll do it. Uh, do that in the same uh, fashion. So that's uh, we're at there. Or we're using our Rosalva set on the decals for the uh, dashboard, so we can get them laying uh, down nice and flat. And that's why they're looking pretty good. Once we get that dashboard decal, then we can uh, put the uh, side uh, panels on, and then put the dashboard in, and then put the steering column in, and then the interior will be pretty much done. Um, so that's the story on that. And we're getting uh, too many minutes racked up, so I think I've gone over everything. Just watch that rear axle, watch the rear track watch the uh, tie rod uh, interfering with your oil pan and uh, I think everything else um, it went uh, went together as intended with no issues so we're, we're going to be good there so um, I think that's it uh, we got a, another video coming up my brother uh, again uh, went auctioning and brought home whole bunch of cool model kits. Well actually he bought uh, bought one auction lot and this auction lot had a lot of cool model kits in it so uh, we're going to be doing a video on that uh, this weekend and um, yeah should be fun taking a look at those kits. Alright guys take care we'll see you in the next uh, video. We got to close it out. That's it for the Wolfman Jack Show for tonight.